Good morning. Woo. It's so nice to be back here again. Uh, I want to read one more thing in honor of Dina before we start. This was written by Patty Truman, uh, Reverend Patty Truman, and some of you remember her. And it's a poem, and it goes like this. We would have to keep you forever, but that is not life's way. Yet for your sake we know that death must have its sway. So we no longer commune in physical form. Our communion now is of the heart, but it can be your name, your presence is here. So in truth, we are never apart. Yet one day we too will travel that road through veils so thin between realities. Then we shall meet again face to face, our lover never tarnished by time's banalities. So go, dear Dina, upon your journey to the stars and galaxies beautiful and vast, celestial music and peaceful green fields until that day we will meet again at last. I thought that was pretty cool. Thank you, Reverend Patty. She's become quite a writer. So today's topic is called Monsters, Inc. Who knew? So I'm going to start out by telling you a story. In 2000, when I first started working for Disney, um, one of my first projects was called, was the, there we go. One of my first projects was a little project from a Pixar movie called Monsters, Inc. Now, how many saw that movie? Great. How many remember that movie? <laughs> and if you don't, I will tell you something. So Monsters, Inc. was about two main characters, a little cute little guy named Mike. Wazowski. Hmm? Wazowski. <laughs> Thank you. He was so cute. He had one eyeball. He wasn't scary. And there's a guy named Sully, who was this big, blue, bear, monster-looking thing that it was scary just to look at. So these two characters, they decide that they're going to enroll in Monsters University. Okay? And their major was going to be scare. Scaring. That's their major. But before they can graduate, they had to pass an exam. Now, Mike came from a family where he had to work very, very hard. He was an intellectual. He was smart. He researched everything. Sully got in because of a scholarship, because his dad was one of the top scarers in the world. <laughs> so Mike was an academic. Sully was a jock. They go to classes. They don't like each other because one is competing against the other. So Mike is doing all the research. He knows all the things you have to do to scare properly. Sully goes, no, I just go, uh, and that's it. Well, come final day, they both flunk their tests. Number one, Mike could not scare anybody, but he knew all the techniques he knew all the reasons, all the things that you do, whether it's a small person or a big person or a different kind of child. He knew all that. And Mike, the Sully failed because he used the wrong scare on the wrong child. But both of these characters had a, a secret. They had a secret, which they didn't reveal. Mike's secret was no matter how hard he tried, no matter what he did, no matter how much intellectual reading and processing he would do, he didn't want to admit he's not scary. He was destined for something else. Now, Sully, on the other hand, his secret was he looked scary on the outside, but inside 
He was scared to death. Scared to death. Both of those characters became a victim of their circumstances. They gave away their power to people, or monsters in their case, around them, and took and lost their power. And giving away your power is a process. It's gradual. It takes time to give away your power. It's not like you do it one day. Um, I do practitioner work, and I've noticed that there are some patterns that people come to me with. And one of the patterns is, I used to do my spiritual practice. I used to do this. I used to do that. And then something changed, and I stopped. And then my life got really crappy. Does that sound familiar? You know, and if you apply this to business, there's a, um, I don't know if it's a rule, but there's a saying in, in marketing is you don't market your business when you're not having business. You don't market when you're not having business. You market when you're successful, when you're doing well, when you're doing the work that you should be doing because marketing when you're successful carries you over into the next valley that will be there. I guarantee you there will be a valley in business where you don't have enough. But when you market here, it carries you there. If you're marketing while you're struggling and you don't have business, you're gonna start making some really bad decisions. You're gonna make decisions based on fear. You're gonna make decisions based on lack. You're gonna start getting desperate. And then the marketing doesn't work, and then you get angry, and I'm wasting all this money, I'm not getting any business. Well, the same thing happens with God. God is here 24-7, regardless whether you're present or not, whether you're conscious or you're unconscious. God is here all the time, but we just have to tap into that. And when we tap into that consciousness, things begin to change. When we are conscious, we become aware and awake. But when we are unconscious, when we are unconscious, we retreat to a place of safety. And in that place of safety, what are we saying to the world around us? I can't handle you. I can't handle you. Think about that for a second. Our circumstances take priority. Our circumstances start taking over. Our circumstances takes away our power. Now, we've heard this acronym many times, FEAR, F-E-A-R. It's an acronym. What does FEAR stand for? I'm sure some of you know. False evidence appearing real. Feeling excited and ready. <laughs> yeah. Feeling excited and ready. Wow. Future events already brewing. That's everything in run. All right. I think we have some possibilities here. Whatever the possibility is, it's a masquerade. It is a masquerade of your circumstances. And you begin to believe that this charade, this masquerade is real. You begin to believe your circumstances are real, that they have more power over yourself. L let me say what power is not. Power is not this amazing force that you use as a weapon to get your way or to convince somebody else that they're wrong. Power is not money, prosperity, abundance, things. 
That's not power. Power is not looking at yourself and going, oh, this is what I don't like about me. I'm just going to, I just, I, this is the bad, you know. It's not about you. All issues of power, and we're talking personal power here, personal, all issues of personal power come from self-worth, bottom line, self-esteem, self-caring, taking care of yourself. Because you have to be, you are the best version of yourself. And the moment you start getting lazy and forget to start doing some things and you don't practice, what happens? Your life changes. Oh, I, I, that happens to me all the time. I mean, you go and you're in a good path and then what happened? Where did it come from? Why is my back hurting? Why is my knee hurting? Why is the business going slow? You know, and you start going, oh, whoa. And then you pause. And then you pause. I actually made a list of some things of how we give away our power. And I had fun with this list. And I'm going to read it. And then I want you to throw out some of your ideas, OK? Letting others define you. Did you ever get labeled? Did you ever get labeled growing up? My parents used to say, Arpad, you're so silly. Silly. I'm a kid. What the hell? <laughs> you know, but I, I hung on to that for a long time, and finally I said, screw it. I don't care if I'm silly. Who is it? Uh, I'll, I'll remember her name in a second. But she, Terry Cole Whitaker, she says, what you think of me is none of my business. Who cares what people think about you? This is your journey, your life. Don't set boundaries. How many, well, you don't have to raise your hand, but how many have forgotten how to set boundaries around them? Other family members. People are always asking you to volunteer. I learned a new term in business this week. It's called voluntold. <laughs> You're told to volunteer because nobody else is going to do it. <laughs> but it happens in business all the time. There are groups I belong to. Nobody wants to. Nobody wants to do anything, so they get voluntold. I think that's a perfect thing. Um, apologizing when you don't have to. Anybody find themselves doing that? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I did. I'm sorry. Why? Uh, I don't know. Anybody got anything they want to throw in? How do you give away your personal power to an organization, an individual, a couple, a spouse, a significant under, other, a family member? Allowing other people to push your buttons. Allowing other people to push your buttons. Whoa, so how does that manifest? You know what your buttons are. They, no one else should know what your buttons are. But this, <laughs> but somehow this person does it. How do you? What happens in that interaction? Giving your power to someone else says you are more worthy than I am. Okay, great. Thank you, volunteer. Anyone else? Saying yes to all. Saying yes to all. Oh, don't I know that one? <laughs> don't I know that one? I say yes all the time, and it gets me in trouble. 
Because I know, I have the confidence to know that if I say yes, I'm going to do something. But then I want to do everything. And then doing everything, you can't do everything because what happens? You can't give to your family, you can't give to your friends. You're certainly not giving to yourself. Anything else? What? Self-doubt. Okay, so if you're self-doubting, what, what's that message we say? What are we telling the people around us? What are we telling the universe when you have self-doubt? I'm not worthy. Enough. I'm not worthy. Thinking about you are a divine being, an individual expression of goodness and godness and energy. You are this most magnificent soul on the planet, individualized. And you're going to say, I'm not worthy? Think about your power. You are the most worthy you can be. And your job is to express it out there in the world and say, hey, here I am. Here I am. I wrote a couple other things down. Um, Putting other needs before your own. Trying to fit in, living for your children, (laughs) living for your children. You're saying they're more important than you. And my personal favor, not speaking up for yourself. Why are we so afraid to do that? Why are we afraid to speak up for ourselves? You think we're going to hurt the other person? Anybody have an idea? Catherine Singer, you you have a look on your face. There's a fear in you because you want to avoid conflict. Okay? And by avoiding conflict, what are you doing? You're empowering that other individual that's causing the conflict (laughs) to do more. Okay. So how can we regain some of this power? Set boundaries, of course. We know about that. Take care of yourself. When's the last time you got a massage? Last week, okay. How many have not had a massage or have not had physical touch in a long time? You don't have to answer. (laughs) But think about it. If we don't get physical touch, somehow, we forget your humanity, I think. You know, I'm closer to my wife when we have (laughs) massage. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Practicing forgiveness. What a spiritual concept that is. You know, practicing forgiveness has nothing to do about the other guy or other person. Practicing forgiveness's purpose, (laughs) only purpose in my opinion, is to reduce your suffering, to make it go away. You are not agreeing with what happened or happened to you or what that other individual did. You're not saying they're right because it happened, but you are in pain. You are suffering, and we don't want that, and we don't need that anymore, neither do you. Why wouldn't you want to just go blah all over somebody and just let it all out of you? Accept responsibility for your feeling. Ooh, somebody said, hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Anybody else? How can you agree in your power? Get it back. Believe in yourself. How do you do that? Go to God. Go to God. Go do you have to make an appointment? <laughs> no. You can talk to God 24-7 any time you want. Anybody else? Decide to love yourself. Decide to love yourself. All right. Do this. Just, just humor me. Humor me. Say, ah. This is all right. I like you. I love you. I love you. Hey, you. 
Get your hand up there. It, you know, if you do it long enough, you go, oh, all right, I can get it. Deepak Chopra um, has given the best example of this for me. He likens all this to being on a railroad car, railroad train, okay? You're on a car, you have total control of that car. That car is yours. You get to control how fast it goes, how slow it goes. You get to control what the insides look like, whether it's clean or fancy or perfect. You get to go forwards and make a decision. Do I go to the right side of the track or the left side of the track? You get to decide, do I stand still and not go anywhere or do I go backwards? Your choice, your car. But in the end, regardless of what decisions you make, all tracks lead back to one place, and that is God. Your train, your car, your decision, but you can't avoid the fact that you come back to God. Whether you like it or not, whether you're aware or not, whether you're conscious or not, you can't avoid it. And that's what faith is to me. That's why we come on Sunday to listen to some kind of inspiration. So, I'm going to, you know me, I've got to have you do a meditation of some kind. Okay? So my question is, this is this. What monsters do you have in your life, whether they're personal or global or an institution or a corporation or whatever it is, what what monsters do you have? And I'm going to ask you during the meditation to find out what it is for you. What's in it for you? What do you need to do? Okay? Ready? And just close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Exhale. And just feel that energy swirling around your shoulders. Releasing the stress of the week. Feeling lighter and lighter. Take another deep breath and exhale, knowing that God is everywhere present. Feel that energy swirling around you as you go deeper and deeper, feeling more relaxed. Take another deep breath and exhale. Feeling that energy swirling around your solar plexus, your knees, and moving down through your feet into Mother Earth. Know with me that you are loved. You are the divine, you are the sacred, you are the holy. Know with me that spirit has more for you, more work, more love, more intensity. So just face your monsters and ask God, what am I to do? How am I to change? How am I to make a difference?
Say thank you, God. Thank you for any little glimmer of information, any vision, any word, any hope that I've received. Allow me to move forwards in a way that empowers me and all those around me. And gently return to this room. Five. Anybody get anything? I'm just curious. That you were willing to share? Yes. Stay out of your living room. Stay out of your living room is what. Stay out of the living room because you're overwhelmed. Okay, for the camera. Anybody else? It's easy. Whatever it is, it's easy. Yes. Anyone else is willing to share? Yeah. No, I've made you the best that you can be. No, I've made you the best that you can be. Yes. Anyone else? Love them the way they are. Love them the way they are. Amen, sister. Or Reverend Alex, whichever you prefer. <laughs> Anybody else? One more? Yes. Transparency. Ooh. No more masquerading for you. All right. So that's all I got. Uh, we'll close with a quick prayer, and then we're done. All right. Know with me right here and right now that there is one God, there's one presence, there's one consciousness. And we are part of that magic called God. We are part of that spirit, that energy that guides us. Oh my God, we are never alone. We have but to ask. As we leave here today, we say thank you, God, for at least letting us experience some of our monsters and know that we can change we can make a difference. And so it is. All right. <laughs>